What's up guys, The Penthers here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today we have got lots of stuff going on. We've got the El Rondo uh, Squad Builder Challenge. We have got the Purple Sterling Squad Builder Challenge and we have got some absolutely epic gameplay for you guys. Some of my favourite goals that I've scored so far this year um, are in this video here today. Now the El Rondo squad builder was quite easy. I had quite a few of the players as untradeables from the upgrade method. Again, another reason why the upgrade method is just awesome because to get these players, um, some of them I had to pay like four, five, six, even seven, eight hundred coins just to fit the right thing. Now I knew what pack I got and I knew that due to the way that some things sell, I was going to be able to make my money back no matter what. But when doing the bronze pack method to the silver upgrade to the bronze to the gold upgrade, getting these players, just having them sitting in your club available for uh, you know, available for using in squad builder challenges. It's just magnificent. So, uh, I've sold a whole bunch of stuff. You can see we've got 30,000 coins. You're probably thinking there's a big dip from there. Completely forgot to record myself buying um, the one to watch Giuliano for about 30,000, 31,000 coins, something like that. I forgot to record it. I was sitting there, actually I was had the, uh, the game on the TV, the, the Russian League stuff. And uh, I saw that he scored a goal. Uh, I think he ended up scoring two goals, right? Or maybe one goal and one assist. But um, I bought him then. And then in a mad rush of everyone like kind of thinking, okay, he's going to get a uh, an upgrade, a second upgrade, because we already had an inform. Um, his price shot up. So you'll see me sell him later on in the video. And even if you check the market right now, just check the market for reference in the video. Um, I just checked the market for uh, how much he's going at the time of making this video, which is... Uh, 4.30 on Monday. Right now, he's 38,000 coins. So even if I chose to sell him now, I would have still made about 7,000 coins profit. But um, you'll see me sell him later on in the video. And that's why my coin balance has gone from like 60,000 down to 30,000. However, we complete the old Rondo challenge. We get some nice players in there, some that I'm going to send to the club. I'm going to, I was, I was um in and ah about Max Gradel or Gradel. I thought we could use him. I've still got Mictarian. I could sell him for a couple of thousand coins. But I thought, you know what? No, let's keep him another pack pool player in the club like our club is like fast becoming pack pooled only which is great whole bunch of bronze items sold uh, interestingly enough the the injury cards are plummeting in price i don't know why um i don't know if, if ea have released a soft patch so that injuries are just not as common um i saw people on twitter yesterday tweeting about how many you know how frequent injuries are for them but injury cards I used to sell, be able to sell like the foot injury card for 1200 It's now going for like 800 On my main account, I was selling uh, the all injury cards, the shiny ones, for like 1400 Now I'm lucky if you get 1000 for them. Like The injury cards are really coming down in price. So um, with Zabaleta running out of loan contracts in the last video, we had to go and buy a center back. And I didn't want to waste huge amounts of coins um, just because I'm in the low divisions and I'm finding it quite easy right now. So I'm happy to play with like a lesser player and choose wisely when to invest my coins and who with. So in the meantime, I thought, let me just go grab myself who I think would be a good centre-back. And I went and picked up Johnny Evans for 750 coins. He was the cheapest by a couple hundred. Again, because of the squad builder challenges, I'm sure I'll be able to sell him on for at least what I paid for him going forwards. And um, the games that I played with him in, he was absolutely amazing. I noticed him all the time popping up last-ditch tackles and headers. So we come up against this guy, interesting team here, a uh, very nice team up front, Origi and uh, Diouf. I don't know about Diouf's dribbling, uh, Sigurdsson, probably a cam that I'm going to look to for myself later on in the series. But then he's got a weird defence, Bruno Martins, Indy, a uh, vorming goal, a bronze centre-back, and I just kind of looked at it and thought, yo, I, I should be good on this, you know, I should be... Uh, should be able to take a bronze defender apart quite easily. I'm really, really enjoying the gameplay in FIFA right now. And it might be because I'm in the early stages of divisions. Um, it might be because it, the game's brand new and fresh and I'm just having fun, kind of like getting used to it all again. But it might just well be that the game is absolutely fantastic. There are a couple of things that I don't like. Um, the first thing that I don't like is that corners are just stupid, like genuinely stupid. It causes your defenders to react stupidly. Um, I just played in a draft where I conceded a goal where the corner came in. Uh, he hit the ball. He like biked to the ball in the box. It ping ponged around a bit. Then the keeper stepped out. Literally, the keeper stepped off his line to stand still to allow the header to go in and go over him. Um, and it, it just like corners just create a little bit of aid. So I wish they'd address corners. Other than that, the only other thing that bothers me is when your player, even if you're controlling him, decides that he's going to let the ball run out of play. There are so many times where like my, my opponent will like stab intercept me, you know, stick a leg out, intercept the ball, and it will run to the byline. 
and I'm selecting the left back and I can just come and pick it up and because the defender's off balance or out of position I can run into the gap. But no matter what, you can select that defender and he'll run a little bit towards the ball then so I actually no, don't want to pick up this ball and you, you, just, you just can't do anything with it and it lets the ball run out of play. It's very silly. It's very, very silly. So um, I hope they fix that. I hope they fix corners. Other than that, I don't think there's any problems with this game. A lot of people say stuff about button, uh, button delay and input lag. I don't, I, don't, I don't notice it. The only time I notice it is on ball rolls, and that's literally the only time. The other skill moves, it seems really responsive. Passes, shooting, very responsive. Um, like I say, it's only ball rolls that seem unresponsive, in my opinion. I, I just think people are, are struggling to adjust to the new game. You know, it's a new game. It's not the same as last year. It's a different game, and uh, you've got to adjust. And I'll be at, like, it, this happens every year. Every single year for at least the last four years, EA have released an incredible product. People bitch and moan about the silliest things and then they basically patch it, patch it, patch it into oblivion to a point where the game's so far broken that they can't even go backwards anymore. It's just It gets to a point where it's just crap. I hope they don't do that this year. I hope this year they stick to their guns, they believe in themselves and they keep this, this gameplay. Like I say, maybe tweak a few things here or there, but in general... I think this game is near perfect. I think it's it, definitely the best FIFA game I've ever played so far. And that, that opinion might change throughout as we learn more OP glitches or you know we, we figure out more broken game mechanics. My opinion on that might change, no doubt. But for right now, for, for the day that I'm playing right now, I am having fun with this game. I am having fun with poor teams like this that you see on the screen against incredible teams. I'm having fun with incredible teams. I'm having fun in draft. The only thing I'm really looking forward to is the foot champions on the weekend. I can't wait for that. I'm very excited. Now, anyway, we go back into the BPL team here. I've, I've got uh, Grado on the left-hand side. We've got uh, Monreal left-back. The only players in this team that I've paid money for have been now Johnny Evans, Nacho Monreal, and Lucas Perez. And Lucas Perez is great as well. He plays really, really well for me. Now, we come up against this team. Uh, very, very nice team. Quite similar to uh, the team we played just before up front. Um, got a, like, he's got really good players in there. Matip, Coquelaine, uh, Cabaselli. He's got Valencia at right back. He's got that Nkudu guy at left mid. He's got Gray and Duth just gone for mad pace up front. It's, it's just a really well put together team. And it probably didn't cost that much because they're all like players that are in the region of like one to 3,000 coins. So it's not like hugely expensive. However, he makes a mistake with Matip uh, very early on in the game. I don't, I don't believe that was him. I don't believe he tried to do that. It's just a really unfortunate mistake on his part. You know, his defender just absolutely crapped out there. And I managed to capitalise on it with uh, Lucas Perez. Fantastic goal uh, to get us in at 1-0. And then this is a goal that I scored. I believe I scored it anyway. That we start off with picking up the ball early. I've got a few clips in here today that are really long gameplay clips because of how well the ball was moved and how well the passing was. This isn't one of them. However, it was a nice little one-two. Deli Alley passing the ball, running around the outside, waited for the Deli Alley, put the run in, and a great finish from the man. Like the first few games we played with him, I didn't really like him. Now I'm used to the way the game plays a little bit more. Having someone like him in midfield is really good because he's he's tall. He's got presence in the midfield that you don't really get in FIFA with many players. Uh, we end up getting another nice little goal here. Just a beautiful passing move. Lucas in behind on his weaker right foot. Slots it past the keeper. And I've really started to get the hang of finishing. I still have the odd game here or there where like my natural instincts take me back to FIFA 16 finishing. And I have to remind myself this is a new game. There's new ways to finish the ball. But overall, especially after I played one or two games in a row, I really like... I'm like, yep, I've got it again. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going with it. And we score another great goal of Alex Hunter across the body of the keeper. And that is Alex Hunter's forte. That is his meat and drink. Getting into about the sort of 12 to 18 yard area, uh, maybe even as many as 25 yards. Getting on that angle there and just banging it to the far post is just brilliant. So we went 4-0 up in this game at half time. It was absolutely cruising. And I kid you not... This guy absolutely must have passed his controller off to somebody else in the second half. He must have done because second half, it was a different person I was playing. There's not like, sometimes people have good games, bad games, unlucky games and stuff. This was night and day. This was like, that first half, I, I was like, I was almost taking the mick at some points, trying chip shots, trying fancy goals and stuff because I was cruising so much. I, I could have been five, six, seven goals up. Into the second half, he ends up, it's just a different game. And you even see by the match stats, I absolutely dominated the match stats over the 90 minutes. And I got smashed in the second half, showing just how much I dominated the first half. We end up picking up 1,500 coins there. 11 shots, 6 on target, 56% possession. 
very good win. If I, if, if the person who was playing in the second half, if it was the same guy, if he played like he played in the second half in the first half, I would have lost that game hands down. So we end up uh, getting some contracts run out of our uh, BPL team, but we move now into the La Liga team. And I do want to try some other teams. I've got my eye on a few players because when I open packs on my main account, I look at players' stats, I look at their values and stuff and think, okay, he might be good for Road to Glory. He might be good for Road to Glory. I've got my eyes on a few players that I just think might be good for a new team. But at the moment, we're just kind of like finding our feet, building our, our coin balance up, completing the squad builder challenges and getting in, into a really nice comfort zone. That's kind of what I'm aiming for right now. I'm aiming for a comfort zone of having two teams of really good individuals and then looking into expanding into other teams and such. But we come up against this guy here. He's got a very nice team, a lot of pace. Uh, Batshawi and then a Valencia up front. He's got Marshall with a um, attributes card. He's got Butland with an attributes card. Otamendi and Smalling in defence. A fantastic team. And um, it was easy for me this game, if I'm honest. Uh, we've got um, Correa here gets in behind. Slams that one to the far post. Fantastic finish. Now, one thing I do want to know, and something that I haven't paid attention to at the moment that I really need to is the daily tournaments. I completely forget about the daily tournaments. After I qualified for the Foot Champions, usually like in, in FIFA, I'd play some, uh, day, some like, um, what was it called? The, the Challenge Cup or the Gold Cup or whatever it was called last year. I would play that a lot just to like find my feet with teams and in games and stuff. They don't have that this year. You either have to play seasons, singles, or Foot Champion qualification. But the Foot Champion qualification offers you the opportunity to build different teams because it has different rules and regulations. And this is the goal I was talking about. Look at that for a goal. That is just magnificent. From start to finish, I put about 12 or 15 passes together. It was just a beautiful goal. But yeah, I forget, like, if I check back now, the prize might be like a 7.5k pack and 3,000 coins. So I'm missing out on potential earnings because I forgot that even after you've qualified, you can still play the daily tournaments and you can win the pack or the prize every single time so if the opportunity is there like the first one we won there was three attempts and we get a 5k pack at the end of the three attempts I, w I talked about in the video i wasn't sure if you can win the prize again somebody tweeted me saying he'd already won it three times and he got the gold pack three times so for us moving into foot champion um qualification tournaments the daily knockouts definitely going to have to pay far more attention to them because i could have missed out on a lot of coins and a lot of potentially good packs. I can't remember what was in what was there over the last few days, so I don't know what I've missed out on, but I could have missed out on some stuff. And we end up scoring again a phenomenal goal from the top of the box with our uh, our left mid that we got in an untradeable pack. We go 4-1 up against this dude, he rage quits, and I was really happy with that result because his team was fantastic. Like genuinely he had an amazing team and we put him to bed with ease, absolute ease. I love the goals that I scored in that game. I scored some really, really nice goals. Um, one of my best goals in there, that passing move for that Adarese goal, the finesse from the top of the box was great. And I was just very happy. We end up selling a few more bronze items on. Um, I'm having like really, like I'm really hit and miss with bronze pack method right now. I'm going sometimes like five, eight, ten thousand 10,000 coins without hitting anything notable. And then I'll open a couple of them the next day and I'll get a Portuguese uh, Liga Nos player for like 6K and an MLS player for like 3K and just make it all back. It really is hit and miss right now. The only saving grace of the bronze pack method at the moment, well, there's two things that are always going to be a positive. Number one, you're able to trade up to the gold players from it. And number two, I have got an abundance of fitness cards that hold about 150k value. So there's always that. Now into the next game, we'll come up against another really nice team. He's got Rashford. He's got Pereira, Boyan. He's got Bailly. He's got Cabaselli. Like, really, really quality. In terms of, like, the BPL... They are the top of the middle tier players. Next up, you go for the high end, high tier players. But these guys are the top of the middle tier players. And, um, you know, they're, they're players that I can see people that are good at the game winning Division 1 with. You know, last year I've seen people with, like, some guy on uh, on Reddit had, like, a team that he played, you know, like a thousand games with. And it was just a bog standard Serie A team. And it literally was. It was like a Bate, um, Barzagli, and um, maybe Chiellini, maybe Benucci, something like that. And just the gold standard versions. And he just dominated people. And he won Division 1 time after time after time. So these sort of, these are the sort of players that I think as well we'll be able to look forward to doing that with. You know, hopefully when we get enough coins, we'll be able to pick up uh, someone like a Bai or a Bellerin or a uh, you know a Carl Walker or because of how low rated they are, a Rooney, a Yaya Torre. You know, I'm looking forward to picking up those sort of guys, the the Laurent Koscielny, 
I mean, we've already got Mustafi. Mustafi's a real high-end player, in my opinion. We scored another really nice goal there with Dybala. I brought him on as a sub. I do believe, and I, I do implore you guys to do the same thing. I believe that substitutes in the game this year are absolutely vital. When you bring someone on after 60, 65 minutes, you can notice the difference. They start tearing defences apart, especially like... If somebody's got a couple of fullbacks that they're constantly bombing up and down with, and the fullback's dead for, for stamina, you could ju you just tear them apart. You bring on someone like Dybala, Bamiyang, or anyone that you've got on loan, you just destroy them. This, again, was another one of my uh, favourite goals here. We've got uh, Dybala down the left-hand side after a nice little bit of passing. Passes it inside. The run comes from uh, Jose Gaia there, and he slams that one home. And just the passing interchange and the attacking intelligence is genuinely amazing. Like the way the passes move, the runs are coming through, creating spaces, running into the gaps. It's just beautiful and it allows to, for, for really good FIFA and really good football. And then we score another really nice goal here. We get down the, the right hand side of Asensio. He runs past a couple of defenders, passes it into Aubameyang, back heels it to uh, Adariz. Adariz with the drag back fake, slots that one past the keeper. Keeper does get some body to it, but unfortunately it deflects into the back of the net for my opponent. And we end up picking up a nice big huge 6-1 win in divisions and I believe that was the title that we won there uh, yes it was so we get 4,000 coins for winning the title 1,000 coins for the unlock and 583 coins for completing uh, the game in itself and you can see again from the match stats just utter domination and this is me dominating people with average players in an average team I don't have any world superstars I don't have like Adariz is my highest rated player and he's slow as hell and nobody uses him and on my uh, BPL team you know I just I just don't have anyone in there that's of like you, you know you never look at my team and think oh god here we go but you look at some of the teams I've come up against and you're like okay so he's got this guy he's got this guy he's got that guy for me I've just got a very generic bog standard team now I went and looked at how to build the Man City team and I did it. I built it. I spent pretty much all of my coins. I spent 60,000 coins, give or take, on this team. Pretty much everything we had available to us. 1.8k there, 8k for him, 10k for the bronze centre-back, 8k for him, 3.9k for Clichy, 1.8k for Fernandinho, 2.8k there, 24,000 coins for Fernandinho, a few thousand for Delft, 20,000 for uh, Sterling, and a few thousand for Nolito. All in all, I think it was like 60, maybe 65, 70,000 coins. It was literally everything I had, absolutely everything. I was left with like 600 coins at the end of it. Of course, we got a few thousand coins back, but more importantly, We've actually got the Purple Sterling on a Road to Glory account. That's insane. And I'm going to try my best to get all the special cards on this account. We've now got Sterling. We've also got Hunter. Working on Jonas and Giovinco will be coming up next. And I'm actually going to start trying to like complete a few of the teams. The, the hype for those two players has really died down, especially the MLS, where you can pick up so many of the silvers for super, super cheap now. Uh, you can see that I sold my Giuliano for 48,000 coins. So I bought him for like 31,000 coins, sold him for 48,000 coins, made a whole bunch of profit. And then in the mega pack, I was really hoping for something good. I was like, come on, like on my main account, I'm getting epic stuff. On my road to glory, I would love a one to watch card, an inform, a legend, a big player to either use or sell. Unfortunately for us, we didn't get anything huge. Uh, we got a few decent players, the fitness cards I'll store in the club for now, the injury card sold for a bit, the thousand coin unlock was a very nice uh, kind of return. Really helped put our coin balance straight back up. I was going to use a uh, font there, but I thought, you know what, Johnny Evans is doing a good uh, good job and I can sell font and probably in another week's time it'll be worth half the price. So if I want him, then I can buy him. I've also got a collar of on the bench that I bought for the, the Man City squad that I couldn't end up using because he brought the rating down. So I'm trying to sell him back on for about the same sort of value. And then uh, we go ahead and buy ourselves a couple of position modifiers for Raheem Sterling. Um, I want to be using him as a striker alongside Alex Hunter. Uh, which means we get to sell on Lucas Perez. Now, Perez has been a really good player for the club. He's scored some important goals and done some important things for us. He's got a really good return. I think I show his goals to game ratio there. Eight games, seven goals, four assists. Eleven goal contributions in eight games. That's amazing from him. We end up losing quite a bit of coins on him. I bought him for 3,500 coins. He's now going at the time of selling him for like 2,800. I think eventually I sold him for 2,500 coins. So we did lose a bit on him, but he gave us back so much in the eight games that he played for us or the nine games that he played for us that um, it doesn't really matter. And what we have in uh, placement for that is this Raheem Sterling. Now, it might be a little bit foolish to play someone so weak up front and so small, physically small, regardless of his physical attributes. But 
I had a look on uh, Footwiz to try and find out what the best chem style for him was. And I've actually got a chem style that suits him really well that we're going to apply to him and give him a boost in stats that gives him, like I think it was 72 um, for physical. So he's actually going to have ridiculous card stats after the chemistry style. I believe it was dribbling, shooting and physical that we gave him. Yeah, the, uh, the marksman because his pace is so high anyway. So that gave him like the... Um, Oh, I gave him finisher. Oh, there you go. So I gave him finisher that boosted his shooting and physical. Not, I think the reason why I didn't give him marksman is because he's only on seven chem, so he didn't get the, the biggest boost that he could. So I gave him finisher, improved that shooting, improved that physical, and uh, we'll see what we can do with him. So we're going to go into a game with him as well. We've got him and Hunter up front, a couple of special cards already, and, and this is already the point where I'm now like, I don't know how I can move away from a BPL team now. I've got two strikers that are special cards. I can build so many things down behind it because they get a strong link together. Any, I could put Wayne Rooney behind them and then build anything else in behind even further. But for, for the time being, especially as we move up through the divisions, this is going to be my kind of duo up front. Alex Hunter has proven himself game after game after game that he can score goals. Okay, he doesn't have the best shooting. He doesn't even have a chemistry style on yet. And I will put Hunter card on him eventually. But he's still putting in the goals. So when I do put the Hunter card on him... He's going to feel like a different man. And he's already scored, I think, 11 goals in seven games and picked up a whole bunch of assists as well. So I'm hoping him and Sterling together up front might just be the, the perfect duo up there. We end up going into a game, like I said, and we come up against an absolutely superstar team. De Gea, Ramos, Pepe, Busquets, Marcelo and Alba, Delafoe, Gaetan, uh, Isco at Cam, and then Adariz and Karim Benzema up front. It really is a really good team. And I was sitting there thinking, my God, again, my my like kind of like sodden BPL team here with like half untradeable players, half loan players, a couple of special cards in there. I'm going to struggle. And to be fair, the first, like this play that my opponent puts together here is brilliant. It was a lovely passing move through the midfield and a great finish from Marcelo. Can't even be mad at the goal. It was so nice. Made me go a little bit more attacking and aggressive in the second half. I actually went ultra attacking and high pressure. See if I can get myself uh, some goals on the ball. We get Deli Ali there, plays into Raheem Sterling. Sterling gets in behind, hits it on his left foot. Keeper gets gloves to it, but can only push it in the back of the net. And Raheem Sterling gets a goal on his debut and is dabbing on our opponent. And then later on in the game, Alex Hunter picks up the loose ball. You see him backing off me here. I noticed that was a trend for him throughout the game. So it allowed me to get the space, play a few one-twos. He's just backing off, backing off. Alex Hunter again with the crossbody shot. Slams it past David De Gea. Dabs on him again. 2-1 was the result and uh, I was very happy to get a win against a really, really good team, a really good opponent. I do think I had the majority of the chances you'll see here from the match stats. I think I looked at the saves as well and I think David De Gea made like eight saves or something. Like You can see they had ten shots, only the five on target and not from the best of positions or best of angles. Um, but I did deserve the win. Yeah, eight, eight, eight saves for De Gea and again just goes to show having a really high rated player in goal or goalkeeper in goal, is going to be imperative this year. They do seem to make uh, saves above and beyond your average goalkeepers. So a little bit more trading done here. We sold a whole bunch of the players that we got in the uh, Mega Pack, a few more bronze items that I sold on. I eventually as well sold the um, uh, Chilean League players. The prices just aren't coming down quick enough to the point where I think it's valuable to try and get that draft token. I'm going to end up spending more than 15,000 coins to get a draft token, whereas if I wanted the draft token, I could just spend the 15,000 coins on the draft. So I'm going to try and sell what I've got to get the best out of it. This is going to be the end of the video, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.